It's now time for Energy Insights, where you get an inside view and local perspectives of all the oil and gas progress going on in the Mid-Ohio Valley. This program is being brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association and can be heard every Saturday at 9 a.m. on local radio WMOA AM 1490, and ESPN Radio WJAW FM 100.9 and AM 630. It's now time for the show. Here's Johnny Wharf, your local host. Johnny Wharf joined again by Brian Chavez from the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association uh, Board of Directors. And the last time we spoke, we were talking about, I believe you referred to it as Gas Buggy or Project Gas Buggy. And we got to the point where, you know, it's kind of like, uh, here we are, what's going to happen? And we ran out of time. So uh, give us the, the quick spin on what we talked about before for those that missed it, and then take us into... Uh, the rest of the story, as they like to say. Yeah, uh, Project Gas Buggy was a part of Project Plowshare that the government was doing looking for uh, peaceful uses for atomic energy. Uh, Gas Buggy was slated to be three tests of lowering atomic uh, bombs down into well bores to see if they could stimulate, uh, uh, greatly stimulate uh, the reservoir to producing additional oil and gas. So the first test was in New Mexico, northern New Mexico in 1967. They That was a 29 kiloton explosion. In 1969, they did a test in Colorado uh, at 8,500 feet below the surface of a 43 kiloton explosion. And then in 1973, they did three simultaneous 33 kiloton explosions at 5,800 feet, 6,200 feet, and 6,700 feet. So they, again, like we talked about, a little explosion causes a pocket and fracture system. So they thought a big explosion would really cause a big pocket and fracture system. All right. So where did we go? So uh, the results from the initial one, uh, the gas buggy, pro- gas buggy project in New Mexico uh, produced about 295 million cubic feet of natural gas, which is a lot. Um, that was... That well had uh, been drilled seven years before, and so in these uh, three 30-day tests that they did, it produced more in those three 30-day tests than it did in the previous seven years of its life. So it was a a pretty successful test. Now, let's look at that in comparison to the hydraulic wells that are, or the horizontal wells that are drilled uh, nowadays, they get billions of cubic feet yeah. from these horizontal wells. So that's again something that they said, well, you know, let's if going down vertically is good, let's go horizontally through the formation, contact more of the formation. Well, that just shows that you can drill vertically, have a huge explosion, but then uh, it's not nearly as good as going down and drilling horizontally through the formation. So a little and, side- and, and and less disruptive or dangerous. Yeah. Oh, what? Absolutely All less. Above. Above. Absolutely less disruptive. Because um, you could drill twenty vertical wells, or you could drill one horizontal well. Right. Right. Um, so some of the other side effects of the of this were, uh, you know, we talk about atomic energy, and we know that there are side effects. Uh, the gas was slightly tainted with uh, tritium radiation, sure. and that, uh, according to the article, it wasn't a huge concern. It's a weak form of radiation. It can't even penetrate the skin, uh, but it just wasn't something that they were willing to deal with right. at the time. Um, so they do, wouldn't, didn't want to put that into the gas stream. The other thing is actually with the 300 million uh, cubic feet of gas produced, it was kind of a disappointment to them. They were really expecting a lot more. Um, they the, uh, the cavity kind of collapsed on itself in a way that didn't wasn't conducive for producing uh, natural uh, uh, drawing in from other parts of the formation. Also, we know that uh, when you superheat sand, and this was in a sandstone, it turns to glass. Um, you know, that's actually, if you think another sidebar, uh, glass is superheated fused sand, and it's actually a, a liquid if, if you want to get real yeah. technical. That's why if you look at old windows, uh, really old windows, they're kind of deformed at the bottom is because that is always moving and, and going down. But uh, for the purposes of this story, um, the fusing of the glass prevented additional oil and natural gas from entering the well bore. 
Well, that's great to get a to get a fifty year old lesson from a guy who's not fifty. That's always nice. If you want to learn more about Project Gas Buggy, I'm sure you can Google it or you can chase down Brian Chavez around the corner. He lives right here in this hometown and works in this hometown and supports this hometown. And we appreciate him being on the radio with us. Energy Insights on this Saturday morning, brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association. Thank you for listening to Energy Insights brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association. Tune in every Saturday at 9 a.m. on WMOA and ESPN Radio WJAW as Johnny Wharf brings you your local and inside perspectives of the oil and gas progress going on in the Mid-Ohio Valley.